This is lesson 5-6, graphing proportional relationships. We're going to use um, what we used the other day for today's lesson. So we're going to find out if things are in proportion, using proportions, and then putting them actually on a graph. The other day we talked about tables. Today we're talking about graphs. <clears throat> so my first question to you is, how can you tell if something is in proportion? We talked about three ways the other day. See if you can list the other way, the ways, the three ways we talked about how you can tell if something is in proportion. If you don't list them, at least think about them in your head. Okay, one of the ways was reducing. One of the ways was dividing. Okay, the third way is the butterfly method. Okay. Now, these are how to tell if something is in proportion on a table. There are other ways to tell if things are proportion on a graph. So just so you know, finding if something is in proportion on a table is different than a graph. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is creating a table. And this is kind of a review from the other day. Creating a table that continues to be in proportion. So if I look at this table continue to make it in proportion. So if I'm going to buy two pizzas, three pizzas, four pizzas, five pizzas, it's going to cost me $12. This is going to cost me 18 This is going to cost me, uh, let's see, 24 This is going to cost me 30 So think about what was consistent for every pizza. It cost 6 bucks. That was the consistent thing that was happening this whole time. So this would be in proportion. Okay, so let's talk about putting proportional relationship on a graph. You're going to need a piece of graph paper or you can sketch it on your notebook. I really don't care. So when you're going to graph or put something on a graph, the first thing we have to do is we have to talk about how to create our graph. So if I were you, I would start by making a line going this way and a line going this way on my graph paper. Now, my biggest pet peeve is when people don't use the lines on the graph paper. Like, this isn't a good way to start a graph. Okay, see how it's in between? You want it to be exactly on your lines. The other thing that bothers me when we make a, a graph is people not using these lines for their numbers. Okay, you must use these lines. Look, they're evenly spaced. You don't have to guess. Everything is perfect. So using these lines for your intervals on the sides, a great idea, okay? Um, you always want to label your side, your graph. So you want to label here, and you want to label here, okay? You can name this X, and you can name this Y if you want. Um, the other thing we have to talk about is creating a, t a graph that has the correct, um, <coughs> excuse me, the correct um, intervals. You can't just decide what you want to go by at the spur of the moment. If you're going to go by twos, go by twos. You cannot just decide randomly what you want to go by, like ones, the five, six, seven, nine, ten. It does not work that way. You cannot do that. It has to be the same intervals. You can't just decide that you want to go by one, threes, twos, fives. If you're going to go by twos, you have to go by twos. If you want to go by twos this way, this is fine. But you could go by something different this way, as long as you are consistent. Okay? If you are not consistent, everything will look in proportion. And that's not what we want. We want proportion things to look in proportion. And we want things that are not in proportion to look like they are not in proportion. All right, so I'm going to go to the next one here, and I'm going to talk about how to graph this. So first of all, we're giving the time and the distance. Maybe this is for every one hour. We'll say this is hour. You can go six miles, okay? This is, this is a possibility. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my graph, and I'm going to find my ordered pairs from my table. So this would be an ordered pair. This would be an ordered pair. This would be an ordered pair. This is an ordered pair. This is an ordered pair. This is considered my x, and this is considered my y. Usually when a table is listed like that, the top is the x, the bottom is the y. So, all right, we found my order pairs, and I'm going to flip back here, and I'm going to write what my axes are. So this would be my time. Remember, we always need a label. <coughs> and this is my distance. Okay. I'm going to flip back here and figure out, okay, so my time, it goes up by 1. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Remember this, oops. This is zero, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Okay. And then look at my distance. Look at my distance goes up by sixes really nicely. So I'm going to go by sixes on my table the other way. <coughs> Excuse me, I keep coughing. All right, now I'm going to use my graph and I'm going to start to graph them, okay? So this is my first graph. It's one. So I'm going to go, oops, why I keep going back? Go one, six. This is my first one. <coughs> my second one is two, 12, three, 18, four. I think it was 24. That should be a 24. Um, it should be consistent. It should look consistent. And the next thing I want you to do is I want you to connect the dots the whole way. So, like, connect them from, you can go through the whole table you, or the whole graph. I want you to go through because there's a reason for that. So, I want you to connect it as far as you can and go through the dots as far as you can. So, this is what your table would look like or your graph would look like. Okay? All right. So, a few things you need to know. So, remember we talked about three ways that a table is in proportion. Well, there's a few ways to know if a graph is in proportion. So, two things. Your graph must be a straight line. And it must go through the origin. It has to have both. If it doesn't have both of these things, it's not in proportion. Okay. So, this would be an example of being in proportion. It's a straight line for now. Pretend that's not there. Okay, goes to the origin. This is an example of something that's not in proportion. There's lines that look like this. This is not in proportion. Another one, this one, not in proportion. It does not go through the origin. It's straight, but doesn't go through the origin. Here's another example. This is not in proportion because it is not straight. Maybe it goes to the origin, but not straight. So the only line in here that's in proportion is the red one. So make sure you know both of these things. All right, so James earns $5 per hour babysitting, create a table, and a graph is his money earned in proportion to the hour's work. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a table. So a table would look something like this. You can make a teacher, so maybe X and Y. And X is going to be the hours, and Y is going to be his money earned. So if yours $1, or in one hour he earns $5. So two hours he's going to work 10 and three hours he's going to earn 15 and four hours he's going to earn um, Let's see, 20. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I can already tell this is in proportion, but I want you to practice graphing it next. Okay. So if you have pieces of graph paper, that'd be a good idea. Okay. This is what it would look like. This would be my hours. This is going to be my money. So one, two, three, four, five. If I look, because it, it goes up really nicely by ones here. This goes up really nicely by fives, so I'm going to go up by fives. Okay, then I'm going to graph my points because technically these would be my ordered pairs. So let's see, one, five, this would be my first top, two, ten, second, three, fifteen, four, twenty, and this is what, okay, pretend it's in a straight line, it's perfect. That's what your graph would look like. If the table is not in proportion, then your graph is also going to be not in proportion. So it might not go through the origin. It might not be straight. So just know that that's a possibility. Okay. Um, here's another example. It's going to say, tell me if this is in proportion or not by graphing it. So we're going to quick just graph it. Okay. So let's see. My time goes up by one, so I'm going to make my time down here. And I'm going to make my cost over here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to look over here. Okay, I cannot go like this. 10, 15, 20, 25. The reason I cannot do this is because my interval is not consistent. Between here and here, I have a 10. Now I have fives. Now I have a five. Now I have a five. It has to be consistent from the get-go. So I cannot label my graph like this on the side. So, if you notice it goes up by fives really nicely, then you need to start with five. Okay? Notice, notice now all the intervals are consistent. So it goes from zero to five, 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 five. So that's the only way I could graph this. I could also go up by tens if I wanted to. That wouldn't have been a big deal. You can still go by tens, but you can still graph it 
because even though it doesn't go up perfectly on the sides, you can still graph it. Okay, so now we're going to graph. So 1, 10, and it goes 2, 15, and it goes 3, 20, and it goes 4, 25. Now look at how my graph goes. This is considered not in proportion. The reason why is because it's not through the origin. And you can also just look up here, like think about your butterfly method. 1 times 15 is 15, 2 times 10 is 20. So you can already tell by the graph, by the table, that it's not going to be a proportion when you graph it. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. So the biggest thing, and I'm just going to go back to this, is you have to be consistent in your intervals. Okay? You have to be consistent. You can't go up by tens. Um, if, I mean, you have to be consistent from the get-go. Like, if I think of the one I had before, if I did that, this is what it would have looked like. And if I would have graphed it, guess what? It would have looked exactly like it was in proportion. So that's why it's really important for me to be consistent. So this should have been, you know, this is a 10, this is 5, this is 5, this is 5. It should start at your interval. You cannot start it anywhere else. Otherwise, it's always going to look like it's in proportion. So the biggest thing I have to tell you is you have to be really, really careful with what you have on your intervals, and it has to be consistent all the time. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.